parents remembered about their unloved son only when he became a wealthy heiress. A tidal wave of emotion swept over the Smith family when their firstborn, Mike, was diagnosed with achondroplasia, a form of dwarfism. What was supposed to be the heralding of a new chapter in their lives turned out to be the opening scene of a tragic saga. Richard and Susan, the proud parents, were suddenly submerged in an ocean of dismay. The jubilant pride that had pervaded the room at his birth was abruptly snuffed out, replaced with a biting frost of bitterness and frustration. The veil of joy was lifted to reveal a truth they couldn't stomach. Their perfect world was tainted. Every laugh, every milestone, every moment that should have been cherished was tarnished by an unspoken disdain. Richard and Susan were consumed by a disgust that crawled under their skin and gnawed at their hearts, transforming the innocent joy of parenthood into a toxic wasteland of resentment. Mike, born into a family he never asked for, was treated like an aberration, a stark reminder of the imperfections of life. Four years later, their second son, Jack, arrived into the world. Jack, with his robust health and evident normality, was like a balm to their festering wounds. The parents reveled in his unblemished perfection, lavishing him with affection and attention that was conspicuously absent in their interactions with Mike. The scales of parental love were tipped in Jack's favor, deepening the chasm between the brothers. The family dynamic was as skewed as a faulty seesaw, always tilting towards Jack. The dinner table would ring with laughter and praise for Jack's accomplishments, his every action shining brightly under the family spotlight, casting a longer, darker shadow over Mike. Each glowing report card, each athletic achievement of Jack's, was a sharp contrast to Mike's perceived shortcomings. Their doting over Jack was like a harsh spotlight, illuminating the cruel disparity in their affections. Mike grew up in the shadow of his younger brother, a silent spectator to the spectacle of blatant favoritism. He was shunned to the margins of their family portrait, an outcast in his own home. Each day was a sharp reminder of his position in the family hierarchy, an undervalued footnote in the otherwise glossy narrative of the Smith family. But in the face of such adversity, Mike's spirit remained unbroken. He became an unsung hero, enduring the turmoil with a resilience that went unnoticed. His heart held on to the hope that one day his parents might see beyond his physical differences to recognize and cherish the unique person he was. The Smith family, once a symbol of unity, was now a tableau of division and favoritism, its members caught in a relentless turmoil. The bitterness and frustration that had seeded with Mike's birth had grown into a gnarled tree, its roots deep in the hearts of Richard and Susan, its branches casting long, dark shadows over their family, altering its dynamics forever. Music became Mike's solace amidst the storm of parental contempt, a sanctuary from the bitter ridicule of his parents. Every note, every melody was an escape route, leading him away from the harsh reality of his home life. As he grew older, this passion for music didn't just grow, it flourished. It bloomed like a wildfire in the crevices of his heart, an explosion of color in the bleak landscape of his life. Against the loud backdrop of his parents' contempt, Mike found harmony in the strings of his guitar, rhythm in the keys of the piano, his fingers danced on the fretboard and keys, producing melodies that told his story better than words ever could. It was his silent rebellion, his voice in a home that refused to hear him. When the time came to choose a path for his future, the choice was clear to Mike. Music was not just his refuge, it was his calling. He wished to delve deeper into the world of notes and rhythms, to make music his life's work. His resolve was as unwavering as the steady beat of a metronome, but his parents were deaf to his dreams. They dismissed his aspirations as a frivolous pursuit, refusing to fund his college education. But this was a hurdle Mike was ready to tackle. Undeterred by his parents' refusal, Mike took up a job at a local diner. The warm clatter of dishes, the hustle and bustle of customers became his new soundtrack. It was laborious work, but Mike persevered. Every coin he saved, every tip he earned was a step towards his dream. He worked tirelessly, each long shift a testament to his unwavering determination, his resilient spirit. Eventually, Mike's hard work bore fruit. He had saved enough to fund his dreams, his ticket to the city of Boston. 
Known for its prestigious music schools and vibrant music scene, Boston was a city that thrummed to the beat of opportunity. Mike took a deep breath and leapt, his heart echoing with anticipation and determination. In Boston, Mike found a city that was a symphony in itself, a pulsating heart of culture and creativity. The busy streets echoed with the vibrant hum of music, from the harmonious strumming of street performers to the classical strains floating from the grand concert halls. It was a city that lived and breathed music, a city that embraced Mike and his dreams. Away from the cold shadows of his parents' indifference, Mike flourished. His passion for music, no longer a silent rebellion, was now a triumphant roar. He had made it, despite the hurdles and rejections. His story was no longer a sad song, but an anthem of resilience and determination. Mike's journey was a testament to his unwavering spirit. Despite the thorns of ridicule and indifference, he had bloomed, a melody rising from the cacophony. The echo of his music filled the Boston air, a symbol of defiance and victory against a past that had sought to mute his dreams. In Boston, a city pulsating with rhythm and energy, Mike's talent found room to breathe, to grow, and to shine. As he dove into the intricate world of music, he found himself not just playing, but in composing. Every melody, every note that emerged from his fingers seemed to reverberate with the unique character of his soul, capturing his journey from hardship to hope. Mike's music resonated with listeners, weaving an oral tapestry of human experience that was both deeply personal and universally relatable. He poured his soul into his compositions, creating music that pulsed with raw emotion and palpable energy. It was like a beacon in the city's vibrant music scene, drawing in those who sought genuine, heartfelt music. His talent didn't go unnoticed. A record company, intrigued by the unique blend of raw talent and emotional depth in his music, reached out to him. Mike, once the underdog, working tirelessly at a local diner, was now on his way to becoming a recognized name in the music industry. Boston embraced him. The city that once seemed vast and intimidating now echoed with his melodies. From bustling concert halls to intimate music cafes, his music was everywhere, Mike, the born boy into bitterness and rejection, had become a respected musician, his name synonymous with passion, resilience, and incredible talent. However, in stark contrast to the city that celebrated him, Mike's parents remained unmoved. Their prejudice, a wall as thick as stubborn as their hearts, remained unbroken. They dismissed his success, their ingrained bias blinding them to the triumphant rise of their son. They chose not to see the accolades, the recognition, and the respect that their son had garnered. To them, Mike was still the same outcast, an inconvenient aberration they chose to ignore. But amidst the turmoil of rejection, Mike found an unlikely champion. His brother Jack had always been a constant in his life, a steady rock in the turbulent sea of their parents' resentment. Even when they lived miles apart, Jack's support remained unwavering, a beacon of hope in the face of their parents' continued animosity. Jack reveled in Mike's success, his heart brimming with pride at every achievement his older brother made. Every concert, every record deal, every note that Mike played was a triumph that Jack celebrated wholeheartedly. He was the cheerleader in the crowd, the voice shouting the loudest amidst the applause, the family Mike deserved but never had. In Jack, Mike found not just a brother but a friend and ally, their bond, born from shared pain and nurtured by mutual respect and love, was unshakable. Jack's support was a testament to the power of sibling love, a shining beacon amidst the darkness of their parents' rejection. In the face of continued prejudice, Mike thrived. His success story was not just about his musical talent, but also about his incredible resilience and his unwavering determination to overcome the odds. Despite the bitterness of his past, his music continued to shine, a melodious symphony in the heart of Boston, celebrated by many, but most importantly, by his brother Jack. Meanwhile, back in the small mining town the Smith family called home, their seemingly unassailable fortune began to crumble. The mine, their ancestral asset, and the family's pride had always been a dependable source of wealth. However, it started showing ominous signs of depletion. The veins of rich ore that once teemed with promise began to run dry, signaling the end of an era. Richard, a man of unwavering faith in the mine's legacy, refused to accept its decline. 
He waved off the experts who urged him to divest, dismissing their advice as cautionary tales born of pessimism. His faith in the mine, once a testament to his perseverance, now began to border on obsession. Blind to the warning signs, he continued to pour money into the dying venture, like a gambler entranced by the siren call of a losing streak. By the time reality finally dawned on him, it was too late. The mine, once a beacon of prosperity, was now an echoing chasm of spent potential. The Smith family, from a position of affluence, found themselves shackled to an enormous debt. The once flourishing mine had not only been drained of its bounty, but it also sucked the Smiths into an economic black hole. Adding to their misfortune, Susan, the matriarch of the family, was diagnosed with a progressive neurodegenerative disease. The woman who had once been a pillar of strength was now on a path of inevitable decline, her health deteriorating as swiftly as their financial security. The treatment was as draining on their resources as the disease was on Susan's health. The soaring medical bills added a new layer of burden to their already suffocating debt. With the once thriving mine now a shadow of its former glory and Susan's deteriorating health draining their remaining resources, the Smith family's world seemed to crumble around them. The bitterness they had harbored for their firstborn sons seemed insignificant when compared to the monumental problems they were now facing. The Smith family, once blinded by prejudice and affluence, now stood at the brink of financial and emotional ruin. Their secure world, built on the unshakable belief in their mind, had collapsed, leaving them teetering on the edge of despair. Amidst the hardship and heartbreak, their past choices and actions seemed to loom over them, a stark reminder of the prejudice and resentment they had harbored against their own flesh and blood. The winds of change had turned against the Smiths, and the future looked bleak. But it was in this very hardship, in the echoes of their crumbling world, where they would have the opportunity to reflect upon their actions, and perhaps find a way to reconcile with their past, with their prejudices, and with their firstborn son, Mike. Despite the years of mistreatment and the painful memories of rejection, Mike proved himself the bigger person when his family was teetering on the brink of disaster. He didn't succumb to bitterness or resentment. Instead, he channeled his energy into organizing a grand benefit concert, the proceeds of which would be donated towards his mother's expensive medical treatment. It was a task that required immense effort and planning, but Mike was undeterred. He tirelessly secured sponsors, advertised extensively, and poured his soul into creating a music set list that would touch the hearts of his audience. For the main event, he composed an evocative song that encapsulated his tumultuous relationship with his family and his unwavering commitment to helping them. When the day of the concert arrived, the response was overwhelming. The audience, swept up in the wave of Mike's passion and the cause it supported, flocked to the venue. The concert was a resounding success. With every ticket sold and every seat filled, the venue humming with anticipation and goodwill. The climax of the evening was Mike's performance. The moment he began to sing, a hush fell over the crowd. Each note, each word reflected Mike's emotional journey. The song, beautiful and heartrending, was a poignant expression of the pain of rejection, the struggle for acceptance, and the unwavering hope for change. In their small town home, Richard and Susan listened to the live broadcast of their son's performance. As the lyrics resonated through the speakers, the heartache and compassion in Mike's voice were unmistakable. The message was clear, and the years of resentment and prejudice couldn't dull its impact. It was a poignant moment of reckoning for the parents who had once disdained their own son. Finally, the scales fell from their eyes. Richard and Susan were moved by Mike's generosity, and his talent no longer seemed like a point of contention, but a beacon of hope. Their hearts swelled with regret over their past actions and admiration for the resilient and compassionate man their son had become. In the face of adversity, Mike had used his talent to lift them from despair had turned his parents' rejection into motivation, their scorn into inspiration. Despite their initial indifference, Mike's passion for music had become a lifeline, a beacon in their darkest hour. In the aftermath of the concert, the Smith family started to piece their lives back together. With the funds raised, Susan could afford her treatment and the family could start chipping away at their overwhelming debt. The concert also marked a significant shift in the family dynamics. Richard and Susan, finally acknowledging their mistakes, began to value Mike not just as their son, but as the strong, talented, and genuine individual he'd grown to be. 
The road to recovery was long, but with Mike's success and the newfound unity in the family, there was hope. The bitterness and frustration that had once clouded the Smith household began to give way to understanding and love. Mike's generous act had not only saved them from financial ruin, but it also sparked a long overdue transformation, offering the Smith family a glimpse of a brighter, more harmonious future.